Well, I think of the religious right as actually a very brief detour uh, in our history. Um, a lot of people, including, I believe, conservative evangelical Christians, are tired of seeing religion used as a prop uh, for a political machine uh, and tired of uh, seeing uh, a narrowing of religion scope in the public sphere to a very particular set of issues, abortion, stem cell research, gay uh, marriage, uh, when in fact all religious traditions have a very long history of um, uh, teaching wisdom on subjects such as social justice, war and peace, how we organize ourselves as people. I mean, you know, a part of my evidence for the decline, when I say the religious right is declining, I think I made clear, I don't think conservative evangelicals are going away. Uh, I think that these old organizations are going away. And if you look at the primaries, it's really fascinating that the um, McCain won in the face of opposition from these uh, organizations and leaders. And Mike Huckabee, who got the bulk of the evangelical vote, had very little support, virtually no support from the old Christian right. Um, he had support from some of the new forces among evangelicals like the homeschooling movement. But a lot of these leaders went to Romney, they went to Thompson, Pat Robertson uh, went to uh, Giuliani and apparently performed no miracles uh, for him. Um, and so, um, you know, I think you're seeing that this, these old organizations and leaders do not have the influence that they uh, used to have or claim to have. I, I'm, I've always been a skeptic. I've wondered sometimes if liberals and journalists were in alliance with the religious right to make them even more important than they actually uh, were. Now, uh, Spitzer is inexplicable at, at some level. I mean, I, I, I used to cover politics in Albany, uh, and um, I called some of my old friends. Albany, Spitzer was right, Albany is very slow to change. Many of the people I covered 30 years ago are still there, uh, and they continue to be good sources. Um, and just about everyone was stunned uh, uh, by this. Um, and, you know, I am, uh, you know, sexual sin does not surprise me being a Niborian in my view of human nature. I, I think what was astonishing to a lot of people is that somebody who, A, had prosecuted sex trafficking and, you know, um, um, you know the, the exploitation uh, in prostitution well, would then turn around and do this. And somebody who was a very tough prosecutor would not have in the back of his head some uh, worry that uh, he might get caught up in something. Uh, with this. So it's really, it's very hard to understand. Well, first of all, I think there's, uh, uh, you know, some of my evangelical, conservative evangelical friends see mainline Protestantism as too humble right now. And, you know, there is, I think there's quite a lot of humility in the mainline Protestant church. I think Niebuhr had a real, uh, a real impact on the way religious people uh, approached uh, the world. I mean, you know, there is, there is no denying that religion's public face has uh, very often not been humble. John, and no, moreover, um, there is just an innate complexity of religious engagement with politics. Jonathan Sachs, in this wonderful book, To Heal a Fractured World, Jonathan Sachs, the chief rabbi of Great Britain, um, you know, notes that there is a straight out contradiction where, at some level, within religious traditions, compromise is inherently immoral. Uh, and that in democratic politics, compromise is absolutely necessary. Uh, and so it, it's one of the tensions when uh, religion gets involved uh, in politics. Yes, I've been waiting for this to happen, and it's probably better for Obama that's happening now. Uh, you know, and the, the uh, Jeremiah Wright has said a, a lot of things and that uh, Obama is going to have to distance himself from. He is also a very popular pastor with a very broad middle class African American um, uh, African-American congregation. To me, what's fascinating is that I think Obama, you know, Obama converted to Christianity. He grew up with uh, no, no religion. Um, he writes about this in a very interesting way in his book. His mom took him to a lot of religious services as a kid, but as he said, more as a seeker and an anthropologist than as a, a believer. And his dad was a Muslim, but really was an atheist. Um, um, what I think he learned from the black church was a rhetoric uh, that helps make his uh, speeches so powerful. And that, funnily enough, while uh, Jeremiah Wright is going to be quoted on some of his more Afrocentric uh, statements, Obama's rhetoric is much more uh, what I like to call civil rights Christianity, you know, Martin Luther King kind of Christianity, which is very much about the conversion of adversaries, not the defeat of adversaries. Um, and that is much more 
what Obama is about. And it, somehow he's going to have to square the circle of what he has taken out of the African American tradition versus some of the things that his pastor uh, may have said in the past. Is the sold out phenomenon that you're talking about, is it a permanent decline in that theme or is this a cyclical thing? And let me give you a specific uh, a question on it. The California Supreme Court at this moment is deciding whether to uh, declare gay marriage in California constitutional. Um, that will happen in the next 10 weeks or so. If you were a, uh, if you were uh, Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama or their advisors, would you keep your fingers crossed and pray to God that they didn't do that? Well, my own view on the, on the merits as well as the um, uh, politics is that I do believe decisions like that are better made in the electoral process than by courts on the whole. I understand why, uh, you know, if I'm, I'm in favor of gay marriage. In fact, I have a section in the book about how I changed my mind on gay marriage. And um, uh, I believe that the conservative arguments for gay marriage are actually the best arguments for gay marriage, which are that if we are a society that values commitment and fidelity, do we send the signal that we value commitment and fidelity by cutting off uh, our brothers and sisters who are gay. So that's my position on gay, uh, from the possibility of marriage. So that's my position on the issue. I think a lot of issues are better decided and have, you have more permanent settlement to the extent that you can do it through, uh, through politics. And I actually think in the long run, and this doesn't do a gay couple any good that wants to get married tomorrow morning. I can see that uh, up front. Um, this will be a more permanent settlement if we can sort of move through the political process. There is an alternative decision they could make, which is no gay or lesbian person can be denied the basic rights of marriage, uh, which would open the way to a middle road position. And, but on balance, I think they'd both rather not deal with this issue if they could help it. Uh, but I don't think it has the power that it had two years ago either. And you, you do think this has got this, this it still has some legs. Has some, has some legs left. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think quite what it had the last time. Um, why don't we break now, say thank you. Uh, thank you all.